Hi angels, it's Friday and I hope you've got your passports ready today. Again, you need to pack your tea and your biscuits and um, your best manners to meet the queen. Guess where we're going? It's Field Troop Friday. <laughs> Today's field trip takes us to London, England, to one of the largest museums of cultural history in the world. Of the more than 13 million objects in the collection, you won't find any dinosaur bones or oil paintings here. The British Museum houses bits of architecture, sculptures, vases, and other artifacts from the whole span of human history. It also has one of the largest online collections and a very cool interactive virtual tour. So, what do you actually find at the British Museum? So one of my degrees in college was art history. Most college art history classes are what you call a survey course, where um, art history one is cave painting to say the Renaissance, and art history two is the Renaissance to 1900, and then you do classes from the 20th century, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but most of the time when you take that, you've got to buy this book or one like this, right? So in this book, of course, it's got the whole of human history, all art history. So it's got all the stuff happening here, pyramids, paintings, all the stuff that all the way through, including all the stuff, there's timelines, a whole bit, bit in here. You take that course. So I studied that stuff in college. So um, when I was at the British Museum a few years back, I was just blown away by the number of things that I'd studied in, this cl in those classes, and they were all in one place. So for example, Hmm. All right, so I put tagged a few things. So um, the what was in the British Museum? All well, the Parthenon marbles. Um, that guy. Um, that stuff. These. Some of these guys that one and this so tons and tons of stuff it was just amazing between the louvre and the british museum and the metropolitan museum of art you've got a whole lot of the world that you can just see um, if you go to those three museums now most of this collection was gathered during British imperialism. Yes, back when people said the sun never set on a British empire. Why? Well, Britain ruled all over the globe. Several of these objects were stolen from native countries um, and are now housed in London, Paris, and New York. Um, and several of the objects are the subject of international controversy. So the most notable of these disputed objects are the two things I was most excited to see myself when I was there, the two things that I wanted to see in the museum. They are the Rosetta Stone and the sculptures from the Acropolis in, the, uh, in Athens called the Elgin Marbles. The British Museum houses the lar world's largest and most comprehensive collection of Egyptian antiquities outside of the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. A collection of immense importance for its range and quality, it includes objects from all periods of virtually every site of importance in Egypt and Sudan. Together, they illustrate every aspect of the cultures of the Nile Valley, from the pre-dynastic Neolithic period through Coptic Christian times up to the present day, a time span of over 11,000 years. Egyptian antiquities have formed part of the British Museum collection ever since its foundation in 1753. After the defeat of the French forces under Napoleon in the Battle of the Nile in 1801, the Egyptian antiquities collected were confiscated by the British Army and presented to the British Museum in 1803. These works, which included the famed Rosetta Stone, were the first important group of large sculptures to be acquired by the museum. The Rosetta Stone is a granodorite, I can't say that, I'm sorry, steely, in who <laughs> discovered in 1799 my by Napoleon's army, which is inscribed with three versions of a decree issued in Memphis, Egypt in 196 BC. The text itself isn't important, but what is important is that the top and middle texts 
are ancient Egyptian using hieroglyphic and demotic scripts, respectively, and the one on the bottom is an ancient Greek. The significance here is that no one could read ancient hieroglyphics. No one had the key to unlock the picture writing. And since the same thing was written in ancient Greek, and people knew how to read that, and the demotic script, which was the ancient letter writing, letter writing style that they knew how to read as well, so it broke the code, so to speak, of hieroglyphics for the very first time. Side note, now you know why. The language software is called Rosetta Stone. It's because it cracks the code to language for us. This is one of the few cases that an object was bigger in person than I expected it to be. So many times, like the Mona Lisa, the object is way smaller than I expected. I looked everywhere for a photo of me standing next to the Rosetta Stone, but I fell short on that. Um, it actually is huge, and, and it's also visible on the Google tour I'm going to show you in a little bit. Now, the other object that I was super excited to be, also super famous for the British Museum, are the Elgin marbles. They're also known as the Parthenon marbles. They're a collection of Greek classical marble sculptures made under the supervision of the architect and sculptor Phidias and his assistants. They were originally part of the temple of the Parthenon and the other buildings on the Acropolis in Athens. From 1801 to 1812, the agents of Thomas Bruth, 7th Earl of Elgin removed about half of the surviving sculptures from the Parthenon, as well as the sculptures from the Propylia and the Erechtheum. The marbles were transported by sea to Britain. Lord Elgin, as he was known, claims to have had written permission from the Ottoman leaders at the time, because it wasn't Greece as a, as a country as we know it in 1812. Um, rather, it was part of the Ottoman Empire. And unfortunately, no one could actually find record of that permission, so loads of people think he made that part up. In Britain, the acquisition of the collection was supported by some, while others likened the Earl's actual actions to vandalism or looting. Following a public debate in Parliament, then subsequent exoneration of Elgin, he sold the marbles to the British government in 1816, and then they were passed here to the British Museum, which ironically looks like a Greek temple, where they're now on display. I'd been in Athens, Greece, two years before I was in London in the British Museum, so I'd seen the temples in their spaces, and here's what I was really ex excited to finally see. So this is the Acropolis. This is the Parthenon. The Elgin marbles are from the, pe the pediment. The panels um, are from the metopes that run along the sides here, um, and they de depict the story between the Battle of the Lapiths and the Centaurs. Um, this is, so here's the pediment sculptures as seen in the British Museum. Here's a Battle of Lapiths and Centaurs. This here is the Erechtheon, most famous for what we call the Porch of the Maidens, which is this section here, where the columns themselves are these female figures draped in what kind of looks like wet fabric. It's really beautiful in person. They're called caryatid scu um, sculpture columns. You can see one of those in London, too. Um, and I found this picture of me posing like a caryatid in July of 2001. So let's take a look at those things and on that tour of the British Museum. Okay, so I've got some really cool links for you. The first one is this one. When you click on it, you get this screen. And you watch it. Check it out. Here it comes. Here it comes. Loading up. Get ready. Get ready. And bam. Oh, I was too soon. All right, so that's super cool, right? No, you don't even know what you're looking at. So it's loading up. What this is, is an interactive timeline of their collection. It's not comprehensive by any means, but it is a uh, timeline of cultural history that you can interact with. So it says here, use the arrow keys or scroll up and down, move back and forth through time. So I'm gonna say I got it. Now over here, I can use up these guys. I can click on these themes here to isolate what's going on, the information. So I say, okay, I've got it. Now, what I see here, it looks a bit like Guitar Hero. Um, so I've got Africa, Americas, Asia, Europe, and Oceania. Um, so as I go through each of the, I can scroll. Do you hear it? Each one of these little bits. Do you hear that ambient sound, right? And all the little blips. 
Again, it's a bit like Guitar Hero. Um, but what happens is if I click on, let's say, this little purple one here, it will connect with other bits of history. You can see those lines. It'll give me an image, and then I can find out more. I can read. There's an audio that will play. It shows me where it is on the map and other related objects in the collection. So similar to the Metropolitan Museum of Art website, but this one is a little bit more dynamic. You can thank Google for that one. So you go all the way through, scrolls all the way back as we go through time, um, starting with the present, going back in time. Notice it gets thinner, thinner, nothing, 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 nothing. Wait, something was made back here. Oh, there it is. 22 million BC, the oldest object in the collection is what people consider to be this first lower Paleolithic, so Stone Age, um, old Stone Age chopping tool. Kind of cool. So check this guy out, see what's in there. Um, similarly to the way we did with the Met site, I want to let you choose a couple objects and comment on them. So the second link we're going to go to is going to take us directly on a Google Street View of the British Museum. So the link I'm going to take you to is exactly here at the Rosetta Stone. And as I navigate around, you can see here is my street view. You can see the museum temporarily closed, but you can see where we are in the museum, World of Alexander, I see all the different parts of it that way. Um, in there, you can navigate around. This is a pretty impressive tour, the way you can scroll through. I was using the compass here to give myself some space. Here we are in the Egyptian collection. Um, conveniently, nobody's here. So we don't have to have anyone standing in our way and no crowds to deal with. So over here, you can see we're getting into some Roman art. Recognize some things here in the Roman art, looking very Roman. Um, going back through to these spaces here in the ancient world. It takes us in Parthenon galleries right down the way from, ah, I can't get in there, huh? Um, but we can't, you know, so you can scroll that way. Notice over here, we're at level zero. If we go to point five, it takes us to a different floor. And scroll around. It's a different collection. These are some Greek vases here. Um, and here, you scroll to a different floor and figure out where we are and navigate through other places in Asia. Around, I'm slipping floors. Here we go. This appears to be also Asian, perhaps Chinese as, in origin as we go through these spaces, taking us into these I can see this Buddha sculpture I would like to get to. Trying to get in, clicking, getting myself in there. So I can see these spaces and get a good sense of this museum. So you can actually tour different floors of it. I got trapped in this vestibule earlier. Um, ah, Japanese tea houses. Um, and you can go through all the way down to the basement one here, basement two can even visit the gift shop in these spaces, which is <laughs> sort of rad. Um, kind of fun with that. So check out the virtual tour, but mostly check out the interactive timeline. And I'll add a couple other links on the Elgin marbles um, and things like that. Here I am back in Google World. Okay, angels, what do we do? So I've got links here at the bottom. There's one to the Google view that's gonna drop you right at the Rosetta Stone. Take a link through, go through the web, the, the museum, check things out, um, uh, check out the scale of things, um, get a sense of what that space is since we can't go to London, um, nor is it open if we were there. So <laughs> conveniently, we can go this way. Second, I want you to go through that interactive timeline. Not only is it kind of cool, It'll, it's similar in the way the, what was it, 82nd and 5th site was set up where you can go deeper into those pieces. Um, there's also a link to just the British Museum site, which helps you figure out how to get through some of the other 
um, uh, content areas, a little bit more information on lots of the different subjects if there's something that's interesting to you. The idea of these disputed, internationally disputed objects, whether Greece wants them back and Egypt wants them back and England says no, it's been being fought for decades. There's objects in New York that people are fighting over. There's objects in France that people are fighting over. Um, in Germany, entire temples were disassembled in uh, the Mediterranean and reassembled in Berlin. And you can walk through these temples and it's a very cool thing. Um, to that, that controversy is something that I find very fascinating. Um, and there's lots and lots of information on the web about that as well. If I can find some links, I'll post that. So today was our trip to London. I didn't do the accent because I know better than to embarrass myself in a recording for everyone to re to <laughs> play over and over. <laughs> but I do hope you liked our trip to London on our Field Trip Friday. <laughs>